Just because it's raining doesn't mean that the show won't go on. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery. Today I'm going to talk about keeping air out of your kegs, how to really properly prepare your kegs before kegging. This is to get a better shelf life for your beers. This is super important, especially for those like hoppy beers, New England IPAs. Of course, the hoppier, the more sensitive, but every beer you make deserves the, the best way to store them. And that's kegging and that's kegging properly. All of these kegs has been cleaned out and sanitized already. Today we're going to get the air out of this. So stop like perching your kegs, do it properly. I will give you a tip in the end if you don't want to do it this way, how, how you could perch a keg a little better in my opinion. Even though we are outside trying to keep everything sanitized and clean, it's not a problem because we're going to do it all sealed. If you want to see how I do a seal transfer, I have already, am I screaming? I have already a video on that. We're actually transfer into one of these pet cakes. This is the uh, Fermenter King Junior, where you can see, so I'm transferring from a Fermzilla into the Fermenter King Junior. You can see proper seal transfer. This is the step before that, and the step between cleaning the keg and kegging. So I will link down below to the uh, seal transfer video and let me know if you want to see how I clean these kegs. Often I don't do stuff <laughs> the way normal people do. So if, if you're interested, leave a comment down below and uh, like and subscribe. Let's get started. This is filled up with sanitizer. The other ones are empty. As I said, they are all cleaned out and sanitized, but this is filled up with sanitizer. The sanitizer I use for kegs is a low foaming, so it's sand clean and I Diluted it with water, of course. This is the uh, the lowest recommendation. You could use water, I'm guessing, of course. Nothing would grow in water, especially if you have tap water. So you could use that also. But don't use like <laughs> sea water. Don't go to your nearest lake and bring home water. I'm using sand clean, 25 milliliters per 10 liters. So this was just under 50 milliliters in uh, this 19 liter keg, and then I filled it to the rim with water. More or less every, there's gonna be a small like air pocket here. So there's no way to get rid of all the air, but we're gonna get rid of most of it. And some of you might think this is wasting star sun, uh, sand and clean, sorry, and CO2. The amount of time we spend on brewing beers, I don't think this is, this doesn't cost that much. And I will use the same sanitizer for all of this and I, I, the way I do seal transfer, if you watch the video, I do pressurize my vessels anyways. So enough talking, yes let's get started. I have some sanitizer here also. I like to be like anal in every step. So I'm gonna start in size order and that would be this keg to that keg to that keg to that keg to one of these kegs, I'm guessing. Is this good content, by the way? Comment down below. So this gas goes on the inside. And uh, yeah, I've been using this quite a lot. It was kindly sent to me from Beer Quip, but I need a new one now because it's starting to act up. If someone has, has a spare or wants to sponsor me with a new one, feel free. Okay, so that's hooked up. I know I'm screaming, sorry. We're just gonna go from the uh, beer side and this has also been flushed out with, uh, flushed out with CO2. I was, no, it hasn't, but it will, it will be before I cake. So I will show you that in the end, because I don't show you that in the seal transfer video. So this is before that video. Beer side to uh, beer side, aka out to out. I do want to fill this up to, to the rim as much as possible, so I will actually open the pressure release valve instead of... I could have used... gone go, go for like a tandem setup. I have a video on that, how to keg two kegs at once with the uh, perfect transfer kit with a tandem connection. That, that was super cool. And I got the, the thing on, on, on tape actually, so I will link to that video down below also. So now I will release the gas here and just 
see to it that I have some here. For me, this is not a waste of CO2 because I will, as I talk about in the seal transfer video, I will pressurize my receiving vessel to the same pressure that my transferring vessel has, aka my fermenter, because this is pressurized during fermentation, pressurized fermentation. I would anyway have to push in CO2 there. So uh, I don't see the argument of that this being a waste. But uh, as I said, promised, I will show you in the end another way to like flush your, your cakes. We're gonna let this fill up now. Yeah, just do like jump to the future. Okay, it's full. <sighs> nice. So now we will just continue with the next one. This is empty out. There's gonna be a drop or, or some left, but I'm not worried. I think this one is just like about the same like the Fermenter King Junior. So we'll try it this way. And uh, if it's not, it's not gonna be a problem because we can fill up the Fermenter King Junior with the last. Yeah, I will just show you. Stop talking. Let's go with the next one. So we're going from the out to the, the out for okay, cake number two. The pressure that I have now in this keg is, is left in there. So that CO2 is not wasted. So let's start, fill up the next one. Let's do another time jump, I'm guessing, because uh, you don't want to see, see this in real time. Okay, number two. Spilled some there. Let me see if we have some left in, in, in that keg. I did spill some because I'm recording and uh, I wasn't ready. So I can't have the camera running, come on. Um, so we will try to see if we have some left in here. Not much. Okay, so that's empty. This is starting to freeze up, so I will thaw this up. So I'm gonna put this in a little bit of water thing to thaw this up before we continue. No, I did not, did not put it in water. Sometimes they say stupid shit. I don't know why, why I said that. I don't think it's waterproof. Should we try that? Com <laughs> Comment down below. If you're finding value in this video and thinking about becoming a subscriber, oof, don't do that. My channel sucks. There are way better channels to, to go and follow who, who don't say, don't show you like the full picture, just the good stuff. So, uh, don't subscribe. I have all the subscribers I need already. Why aren't we transferring? We're not on. Okay, we're transferring and it goes fast. If you have subscribed already, maybe you should consider unsubscribing. Unclick that little bell so you don't get any notifications when I put out a new video. Of course, if you really dislike this video, why don't you leave a big fat comment down below? If this warning didn't help you at all and you want even more bad content, I do have Patreon and channel membership. You could check that out or just buy me a beer. All links down below. Maybe this explanation is not needed for everyone, but I do get a lot of questions. So what's actually happening now is that we are moving the, uh, the sanitizer solution over cake by cake and we are replacing that with CO2. So now all of the air that was in this fermenter keg is getting released here while we fill this up with sanitizer solution or whatever you would fill it up with. But if this would have been beer, this beer would be oxidized. So we are losing some, I lost some there. So that was see if we can get any more out of this. Now this is good content. This means actually that I need to top this up. I'm just gonna use some water I think. Where were I? I want to fill as much as possible so when we are moving it over to the next one all of the uh, sanitizer solution are replaced with pure CO2. So Maybe this was a good moment to like, like explain this. We have air, so we change that out to the, the liquid and we push all the liquid out, replace that with CO2. Or else it would just be mixing gases really. But I will show you what I think would be the, the best approach if I were to uh, 
not do it with liquid. This is just tap water because as I said you don't really maybe need the sanitizer but it feels good and uh, I'm just this won't dilute it that much. I'm gonna keep everything sanitized. I always have some stores and in a spray bottle. Or, or this cake might even be a bit bigger, but I did lose some, but I did obviously go the, uh, the wrong way, so we should have done the ferment king and then that, but yeah, it's, it's all right. Almost to the top, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be anal today as usual. Okay, we're filled up to the to the top here. Okay, we're there. This is the oh, she's a squirter. Let me just do this one. We can actually see how much we are left with in uh, a cake. Like this is gonna be different from cake to cake, of course, and between the different floats you are using. If you have uh, an ordinary uh, dip tube, of course, the good and the bad, as usual. Let's see it all, and then I will show you how I would go about it if I were to purge instead. Well, we can continue squirting. Let's see how much is being pushed out in the end there. Maybe if I tilt it. Epic! So if you come over here, I will show you how much we have left in this. I don't know how well this picks up on camera, but we have nothing left. That's quite astonishing, but here you have it. The proof. The proof is in the pudding. So these two are obviously full right now. I could just keep those like this, store it if I wanted to, and then use it the, uh, the next time. No problem with that. And now, first for the first time I'm wasting CO2. Now let me show you how I would do the the perching if I if I wouldn't had uh, used the sanitizer solution which I think is best. So you know when you fill this up to the rim with water in this case sanitizer and then you push it out you have just CO2 in there. But instead of doing it like the normal way to just Add, push the gas on the inside and uh, perch it. Because you would have to do that quite many times. If we used one bar, you know, the air pressure is around one bar at sea level. What's that? Plus minus 5% or something. If I push one bar on here and wait till this has settled, and if it would have been a perfect mixture, then I would have get rid of, and, and of course when I went it, uh, then I would have get rid of like 50% of the, uh, the air, and air contains 19% oxygen, so I would have, have an oxygen level, if we say 20, right? round up to 20, I would have an oxygen level of 10% in there. And then if I did it again, pushed one bar on here, waited for the, uh, for the pressure to, to set, not just push on and, and off, I would have still, and after venting it of course, if, if you just push pressure on there, you haven't vented out anything. So I would have 5% and if I did it again, I would have 2.5%, half the amount every time. That means that it has to be like a perfect mixture of the two gases if that calculation is gonna hold. So I would do like this instead. I would push it on the outside instead, keep the pressure leave open and push it on the outside. And that would mean that I'm pushing CO2 into, the, am I screaming again? I'm pushing CO2 into the bottom of the, uh, the keg and uh, hopefully that would push the air out. Of course, it's gonna have some blending. So just get it on there. 
Can you hear that? But we never know how long should we do this for. You could even like open this and, and, and vent it. Like letting all of the uh, air out. But when I do it like this instead, with the uh, pushing the liquid out with CO2, I know that all of the air is out there because all of the air, more or less everything, right? It's never going to be perfect, but as perfect as possible. All of the air have been replaced by the liquid and then replaced with the CO2. Of course, then also we could like perch it. But this actually, for me, wastes more CO2 than, than that way. Because I'm trying now on camera, we had some spilling accidents and a little wasting, yes. But if I weren't like have cameras to, to play with. Because all of these kegs, you don't, can't see them now. All of these kegs, they have, they are pressurized to some level. So now when I'm about to keg some right now and the rest later this week, I don't have to push the same amount of CO2 that I would have. But if you want to see how I do seal transfer, it's a really good video because you really get to see it as I'm transferring from two different fermenters, um, see-through fermenters, so you can really see the action. But it would be the same approach if you were to ferment, uh, sorry, if you were to move the beer into a Cornelius keg or from cake to cake or whatever. I promise you to show you how I flush this with CO2. This is filled now with sanitizer solution and this keg is pressurized and I'm gonna keg this keg. Yes, I'm gonna fill this keg with beer. I'm gonna keg this keg. So, let's get this ready. This is just now CO2 in here because of the way we have been doing it today the liquid way. So, I'm going to push this on the outside and here I have a little bag clamp from IKEA and this is like perfect instead of sticking your finger or something in there. This goes in, fits perfect and just release. Nice. So this is ready now for for kegging. I hope you found this video helpful. If you want to check out how I keg, I will link to that video down below. We can see really good seal transfer. So, guys, see you in the next one. Dog Hans out.